my name's Kudra Clover, and I am a silk painter, and I'm showing a piece at Viewpoints. And um, I was chosen to be on the Reaching Out project by Joelle, and she asked me to select someone in our community. And I chose my buddy Malik. Um, Malik is a healer and an acupuncture specialist, and he owns the Dragon's Den, and he did a lot of healing on me, brought me back to health, probably why I'm alive today. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you can explain more what you do. Um, my name is Malik Cotter. I live on Maui. I'm a doctor of Chinese medicine, oriental medicine, 40, 45 years now. Um, Beijing Medical School, Chengdu Medical University, living in China. And that's where I draw a lot of my inspiration from, from living over in the Middle Kingdom of China for about a dozen years or so. So Kudra and I are buddies. She asked me to get involved. Um, the way I live and the way I approach life is through a Taoist way, which is just basically being yourself, just being natural and getting rid of all the concepts you can. And this was, uh, this was challenging for me because I don't think I lived in the Tao before. I think I lived kind of chaotically. But um, this project helped me a lot. Kudra and I were talking about what's the Tao. And I, just, and I said, you know, the first chapter of the Tao Te Ching, which is the classic of Taoist, Taoism, <clears throat> it says um, the, the Tao that can be spoken is not the Tao, which means basically you can't put Tao or way. It's, it's, cinnamon. it's a synonym for um, the way, present, life, God, Allah, whatever term you want to use for the great source of life. The Tao is just another one of those synonyms. But I thought about it and I went, it's being present rather than being a person. Uh, and that kind of puts the Tao in a little bit of a eight word situation there. Because you're being present, you're not following who you think you are, you're not stuck into an ego identity. And that's what the Tao is about. It's about being in the moment, letting life lead, and spontaneously following, just letting the inspiration, the intuition, and insight of right life bring you your revelations. And just living in accordance with nature. That's what the Tao is to me. Which made this really challenging for me because I was trying to plan out what I would do to represent the Tao or explain the Tao or show something that looked kind of like meditation or yin yang or I researched these symbols and I, I don't know, maybe months went by and I wasn't getting anything and I was like, uh oh, I got to pull out. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I talked to Malik again and he's like, um, yeah, of course you can't do it because you can't represent it. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, just go flow. So. I did. I just put my canvas out and I just started flowing and spirals started coming out of me. And um, I like to paint a lot of nature stuff. I like to paint microscopic stuff. So I started painting spirals and I started seeing um, these little microscopic shell things that I've been researching, which are um, foraminophores. They're one-celled organisms. But then I noticed that they kind of look like galaxies. And in the Tao Te Ching, um, there's a chapter that says, um, you may have to help me with this. Long defined short, big defined small. Um, you say it better than me. No, you, you got it, you <laughs> got it. It's like the yin yang, the opposites, the push, the pull. So I didn't know if I was painting galaxies or microscopic galaxies. So that's kind of what this is. It's big and small. This is where I came in with Kudu just said. She was having a little challenge on not figuring out how to go about doing what. And it, it was so wonderful because the Tao is, is is everything. It's, it's abstract and it's relative. It's concept and it's non-concept. And Kudra's trying to get this concept. She's trying to get this mental image. She's trying and searching her mind to find out how can I put this into a conceptual frame. And I'm like, no, you don't need boundaries. You don't need a conceptual frame. Just empty out and allow <laughs> it to happen. Allow the Tao, or because this is what we're doing, allow it to come through you. Just let it happen. Don't even have to think about it. If you're tapped in, it's when, it's when the dancer becomes the dance, or the painter becomes the canvas, or the singer becomes the song. It's, it's when you're just being with what is, it happens. You don't have to think. And that's the beauty of the Tao. The, the thinking is fine. There's nothing wrong with thinking. It's just that the stream of consciousness or the stream of thinking that throws us off because it's so belief and identity centered. And I'm saying, could just let it go, drop it. Just let it happen. Just get into being just a conduit 
and let it flow through. And voila, here's what could <laughs> put together with that one. It was challenging because I would, I would think I would hit the flow for a minute, but once you know you're hitting the flow, you're not in it. So, <laughs> so I was, it was like in and out, back and forth. The Tao can't be perceived. Small, it's smaller than an electron. It contains uncountable galaxies. And the Tao is the great mother, empty yet inexhaustible. It gives birth to infinite worlds. It is always present within you, and use it any way you want. So, ta-da! <laughs> um, it's called Galaxia because, um, and I didn't know this until after I named it, but then I thought, I better look this up because this could mean like a video game, Galaxia, <laughs> <laughs> which it is that too. But um, it is uh, in the New Age mother goddess corresponding to Gaia, but on a higher galactic level. Go figure, it means that. So, Well, the Tao is male and female, but it's used a lot with the feminine because of the receptivity. Um, it's, it's how can you go have a cup of tea if your teacup is full? if you're going to someone to have tea with. You, you need to have the empty cup. It's the, the empty vessel. A potter can make a, a pot, but it's the emptiness inside that serves its purpose. It's not the pot. It's the emptiness inside. And that's representing in the female, the receptivity aspect. And to receive inspiration and intuition and insight. That's how the, that's how the Tao works. You just get out of the way and allow it to happen. So the feminine is a very important part in, in Taoism because it represents the receptivity and getting out of the frontal lobe of our thinking brain and trying to make things happen and conceptualize, put things in boxes and control issues. The, the Tao is like, forget it. <laughs> Everything's going to happen in just the way it's supposed to happen and just teach us to accept, accept what is and then go with it, being genuine and authentic. So that's pretty much what the feminine, it's the receptivity, it's the receptive aspect. My process is a, couple, a mixture of a couple different kinds of silk painting. I do um, rosome, which uses wax, and I use resists. And this one mostly has resists, which um, kind of block off the parts. I used wax to push back some of the dye, hold it out. Um, Normally with silk painting you have to plan it out a lot because you can't make any mistakes and if you do if you put a color down even if it's yellow you can't it's never going to be if you try to put black over it's never going to be the way that it's supposed to be so this was really challenging because I'm trying to flow but I'm trying not to plan it and I'm trying so I would just do a part of it and then paint that and see what happens sit back look at it think about it let it flow and then add another part to it rather than sketch it all out and put it all on there and try to stick to it because then I'd be not in the Tao, right? <laughs> um, let's see what else. I use um, salts and alcohols to get different effects. Oh, these kind of are interesting. These things, by the way, are also called uh, foraminophores. When I was thinking that these, these foraminophore spiral shell things were like galaxies, I'm like, well, I should put some stars in there because I need galaxies, right? I'm like, is there anything that's microscopic that's shaped like a star? And it turns out that these little creatures are actually also forums. They're the same creature, just in a different shape. I'm like, ah! <laughs> so it's a sprinkling of stars to the galaxy. I feel like I just started understanding it a little bit, just recently. Like, actually, last night we were having tea, and he's, we were like, you know what we should really do is just bring a canvas and start painting it there. That's really, that would have really been it. But I didn't get that. We didn't figure that out till last night. I'm like, well, I don't have time to get a canvas ready. But um, I'm going to continue. Um, learning about it. I think it's going to help my process to just relax and chill out because I'm kind of hyper. <laughs> 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 and maybe study with Malik because he teaches this. I gained a lot out of this. Um, a lot of just the way we interface with one another. It helped mm -hmm. me understand things and allow me to just accept what is. Um, I, I really appreciate Kudra. Uh, I went to an art show of hers, and I saw these little microscopic creatures that I would see under a microscope, but I saw them up on, on the wall, <coughs> like this. And I was like, I like that. I like seeing these blown up, magnified a million times from the microscope. That was something I, I also learned a new appreciation for. But being with Kudra really is just, it's an enlivening experience. She's full of life, she's full of bubbles, she's, she's a joy to be with, and it's infectious. So it was just so easy to be with her and just to communicate 
we sit and drink tea, we talk, we, we share ideas. She gives me what she's feeling. And it's interesting because she, she just mentioned a little while ago about how being in the Tao, and then she's thinking and planning, and that's not in the Tao. No, that's, that is the Tao. That is the Tao. It's just, yeah, you see, sure. that's where the mind goes, that you're not doing what you're supposed to do. But no, it's just, that's the perfection of it. If we don't judge what happens, it just happens. And that's the beauty of working with Kudra, is we just went, went for it, shared time and energy, and a couple cups of tea here and there, and this is what we came up with. And I really enjoyed being with Kudra a lot. When I first looked at her piece, I looked at it with, with thought. And I went, oh, well, this is that, and this is nice, and I can see how you did this. And then I went, OK, that's nice. Now look at it without thought. And I went into it, and it captured me. It like sucked me right into it. And I didn't have to think about it. I felt it. It was a feeling more than an, more than an analyzing of what's happening with the painting and what it is. And, more of a critiquing, it was more of just feeling it, and feeling the beauty of it, and feeling it, and how it draw it drew me in. And, and that was really special for me, because I, I, I appreciate art. Um, the, the Impressionists are my favorite, and this is not so much the Impressionists, <laughs> maybe a little Van Gogh or something, but, but um, it drew me in, and it created a feeling inside. And that feeling was calm, it was joyful, it was happy. I just. I just fell, I fell out of who I thought I was by going into this. <laughs>